Here's Elder Brother, Mr. Lawrence here with your flipped lesson for Wednesday, March 21st. We are going to talk a little bit more about graphing quadratics. And remember that we use the equation x. So, no, I can't sing. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a to help us do what? This equation finds the zeros. This equation finds the zeros. What are the zeros? Unlike some of my seven graders who seem to think they're placeholders, in the sense of a quadratic equation, they are the places where the graph crosses the x-axis. So this, the zero is the place where the graph crosses, I should say places, because it could be more than once, crosses the x-axis, right? That's what the zeros are. Okay, and remember that this part of the quadratic equation, the discriminant, this part right here, this tells us how many solutions, or in other words, how many zeros? How many zeros? When the b squared minus 4ac is positive. In other words, when it's greater than zero, there's two solutions, or two zeros, right? Okay, when the b squared minus 4ac equals zero, there's one solution or one zero. That means the parabola is actually sitting on the x-axis. The vertex is on the x-axis. With one solution, the vertex is on the x-axis. Did I tell you that? The vertex is on the x-axis. It's the one solution case. And the third possibility is that the b squared minus 4ac is less than zero, we get a negative under the square root. Jessica Ballone would tell you we get an imaginary solution. And so we don't deal with imaginary solutions in this class, so we say there's no solution. That does not mean it can't be graphed. That does not mean it can't be graphed. It means that the graph, the parabola, is either above the x-axis or perhaps it's below the x-axis. It's one of those two possibilities. Okay, and of course, those could move around. They could be here or here or right there, almost so close, but not quite touching it. Or they could be way up there. Okay, and same here. It could be all around. Okay, so now don't forget, think about the person that created this quadratic formula thing. They must have been brilliant. Uh, it's just amazing because this part here, I don't know if orange is going to show up very well. Um, this part here tells us very important information as well. All right. This part tells us the x coordinates of the vertex. Right? The x coordinate of the vertex, not the y coordinate. Okay. So let's take a problem like this. Okay, let's take a problem like this. Oh, by the way, I'm going to apologize in advance. I'm not going to have the answer key on this one because these answer keys take me a long time to make up, and I just don't have time to do it at the moment. I'll have it ready for you tomorrow. I'll have both answer keys, the answer, the answer key to the assignment that was due today that we didn't really check totally, and then the one that you got assigned today that is due tomorrow. Okay, I'll have both of them up for you. All right, let's say we have this equation, y equals um, x squared plus x plus oh, 10, okay? I know ahead of time that this is going to come out to be no solution. It's not going to cross the x-axis. I know that from experience. You don't know that yet. So we're going to go through and we're going to pretend like we don't know that, okay? So I'm going to put my graph over here, and I'm going to lock that in place. And the first thing is I'm going to do, I'm going to identify A, B, and C. A, B, C, easy as 1, 1, 10. 
there we go. All right, and then I'm going to go zero hunting. So I'm going to do x equals the negative of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. And that's all over 2a. Now I can see in here that I am going to get a negative. If you can't see that, go ahead and do the math. Okay, I'm going to get 1 minus 40, which is negative 39. Square root of negative 39 is an imaginary number. So I know right now there's no solution. I'm going to stop with this. And now I'm going to go here. Okay, so I found no zeros. If I had found zeros, I would then go to the x coordinate of the vertex and I'd almost be done. But because there are no zeros, I'm going to go right to the x coordinate of the vertex. So I'm going to type x equals uh, the negative 1 over 2, which is negative 1 half. I just simplified that kind of bluish gray highlighted part there. All right. So I know that my line of symmetry is at x equals negative 1 half. And that would be approximately there. And I'll tell you what, I'll change the thickness of that guy. So that, there we go. He's not taking up so much space. All right, that's pretty close to a half. So the vertex, the vertex is going to sit right on that broken line, right? Now I'm going to go to my t-table, x, y, and I'm going to put in negative 1 half which means I'm going to plug negative 1 half in to y, or in for x to solve for y. Negative 1 half squared plus 1 half plus 10. All right, this is going to be 1 fourth, right? I feel like I've made a mistake, but I think I'm, I think I'm good. Plus 1 half plus 10. Well, 50 cents plus a quarter is 75 cents. This part here must be 3 fourths. If you don't know how to do that, 1 fourth plus 1 half. I can't add those fractions because the denominators are different. So instead of simplifying a fraction, I'm going to blow it up. I'm going to unsimplify it. I'm going to change 2 fourths, a 1 half into 2 fourths, because then my denominators will match. 1 plus 2 is 3. How many fourths do I have? I have 1 fourth here. I have 2 fourths there. I must have 3 fourths. 10 plus 3 fourths. Uh oh, better get your calculator. That's a hard one. 10 and 3 fourths. Now that's a bit of a problem because 10 and 3 fourths, my graph doesn't go up that high. Well, I just won't count by ones. I just won't count by ones. I'll tell you what, I'll count by, say, um, twos will probably work. Yeah, I'll go ahead and count by twos on my y-axis. I'm still going to count by ones on my x-axis. It's okay to do that. Yes, it is. All right, so... In my t-table, I get the point negative one-half, and then ten and three-fourths. Okay, so ten and three-fourths, let's see here, two, four, six, eight, ten. This would be eleven three-fourths, so ten and three-fourths is right about there. And I'm going to label that negative one-half, ten and three-fourths. Okay, now... I need two other points. I know the parabola is going to go upward. How do I know that? Because A was positive. If A were negative, it would open downward. To get my other points, I'm going to be very, very smart. I'm not going to plug 1 in for x. I'm going to plug a number that's even easier. I'm going to plug 0 in for x because this will turn to 0, this will turn to 0, and that will be 10. So I'm going to go ahead and plug 0 in for x. All right? And I'm going to get 10 out. So I can plot that point. 0, 10. Uh oh, I have a mistake. I have a mistake. My parabola is opening downwards. Hold on one second. Okay, I caught my mistake. It's right here. This should be a negative 1 half. So I should have uh, 1 fourth minus 1 half plus 10, which will change my work over here. I'm still going to have, that's going to be minus 1 half. I'm still going to blow that up to 2 fourths, and that'll end up being a negative 1 fourth. And so then when I combine it, I'm going to get 9 and 3 quarters here. Sorry about that, folks. Hopefully you caught that on your own. 9 and 3 quarters. And so that will change this. 
it's okay to see a mistake. Teachers make them. They happen. It's all part of learning. Two, four, six, eight, nine and three quarters. So it's going to be right about there. And that'll be at nine and three quarters. All right. Now I feel better about my work. And notice how I can check myself as I go. All right. So I still get zero for ten. Uh, ten for zero. So there's zero, x, y. That's the origin. So at zero, I'm going to go up to ten. Right? So I think 10 is right there, and that's the point, 0, 10. Now, I'm going to work so smart. I'm going to use the symmetry we talked about in class today. This point here in the x direction is half a unit away, right? I'm going to go half a unit away in the other direction. And when I do that, I have to get the same y-coordinate out because of symmetry. So on this one, it's kind of hard to see because it's so close. This was half a unit. I'm going to go half a unit the other way, which ends up being right there, negative 1, 10. And I'll show you a, a better example here in a second. And there you go. There's your parabola. Okay. going to do one more example here. Try to get it done in under 15 minutes so Quinn doesn't yell at me. Not by the hair of my Quinny Quinn Quinn. Okay. So here we go. Let me lock that in place. Okay. In this one, I'm going to... Look for A, B, C, just like in the last one. It's easy as negative 1, 7, negative 6. Now I'll go zero hunting. Uh, negative 7 plus or minus the square root of uh, 7 squared minus 4 times A times C, which is negative 6. The whole thing is going to be divided by 2 times negative 1. So then doing a little simplifying, plus or minus, I'm going to get 49. And then I'm going to get, uh, looks like minus 24, right? Okay, negative 2. Let me just make sure I don't have a mistake there. No, I think that's good. So then x is going to equal uh, negative 7 plus or minus uh, 5, I think, because that'll get 25, and square root of 25 is 5, and divide by negative 2. So then my two zeros are going to occur at negative 7 plus 5 is, um, yeah, this is good. Negative 7 plus 5 is negative 2, divided by negative 2 is 1, so that's one of my zeros. So get a nice big fat zero there at 1, 0. Okay. Now, I'm also going to get negative 7 minus 5 is negative 12. Divided by negative 2 is positive 6. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And that's going to be at 6, 0. Okay. Now, I will use this part of my formula here to get my vertex. Okay. And when I do that, the x-coordinate of my vertex it's going to be x equals negative 7 over negative 2, which is 3 and a half, right? Okay. So I'm going to show my vertex. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. There we go. Something like that. Looks like it might be off a little bit. Let me change its thickness so it's not so dominating. And that's pretty close. It's hard to get it exactly right, but... Okay, that's pretty good. All right, now, to find the y-coordinate of the vertex, I'm going to plug in 3 and a half. So the equation was y equals negative x squared plus 7x minus 6, I believe, right? Yeah, there we go. All right, so negative of 3 and a half squared plus uh, 7 times three and a half. I don't want to use three and a half. I'm going to use seven halves and then subtract six. Well, I know that three and a half squared is the same as 12.25. Uh, 3.5 times 3.5 is 12.25. I've shown you how to square two digit numbers that end in five. All right. This is going to be 49 over two, which is half of 50 would be 25. So this would be 24 and a half, right? And then take six away from that. All right, so where are we at here? Uh, 
this is going to get me 12 and a quarter, I believe. And so I'm going to be at 6 and a quarter. I can use a graphing calculator to check. I'm suspecting 6.25 to be my vertex. Oh, no. Oh, that's my Y coordinate. Um, 3.5. Yeah, it is 6.25. Good. Okay, so I get the vertex at right here, three and a half, and then up set one, two, three, four, five, six and a quarter. So right there at 3.5, 6.25. Okay. All right, then I'm going to go ahead and draw my graph. And now I'm going to demonstrate that symmetry idea for you again. All right. How far is this point from the line of symmetry? Well, it's one, two and a half units. How far is that point from the line of symmetry? Well, it's half, one and a half, and another half is, oh, I missed it. It's two and a half units. You know how I missed it? I didn't draw the right part of my parabola well enough. Let me redraw that so it can be more accurate. There you go, it's a little bit better. All right, so this is two and a half units. That is two and a half units. And notice they're symmetrical. If I figured out what the equation was when x is two, or uh, yeah, x is two, find out this point, I will get the same point one and a half units on the other side when x is five. I will get the same y coordinate. Okay? All righty. Mr. Lawrence signing off. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye, everybody.